Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's webinar. Tonight we've got the incredible Tara Bliss on board with us, so that's very exciting. Thank you so much, Tara, for joining us. Um, Tara achieved the rank of Diamond in doTERRA in 10 months, and she's a blogger, she's a best-selling author, um, but she's also had a background in working in bars and doing, doing lots of fun party stuff as well. So a bit of an interesting journey for doTERRA, um, for Tara, for doTERRA. See, I have serious issues, doTERRA issues. Um, so... <laughs> An interesting journey for Tara, and Tara presented at the leadership retreat we just had. Um, if you ever get a chance to come to leadership retreats, whether they're Australian leaderships or American leadership retreats, that's where I always get the most inspiration and the most um, cup filling and connecting, and not only connecting with the amazing, incredible people in my team, but people in other teams like Tara and Vanessa and Mish and all these amazing people. Um, we're so lucky in doTERRA to have such a collaborative community. So I'm really grateful that Tara is here tonight. And um, I do need to get her PowerPoint up as well. So onto it tonight, guys. Just killing it at work. So I can share it. And Tara can present on what she presented at Leadership Retreat, which was her topic, Are You Standing in Your Own Way? So I'm just going to share screens. And then Tara, if you just want to let me know um, when to, to flick over, that would be yeah. great. Thank, thank you, Nelling. Thank you for all that you have helped and supported me with on this journey. I adore you. You are very welcome. Thank you for all that you've helped me with and supported me with. <laughs> Always two ways. Yes. So, are you standing in your own way? I'm just going to move that over there. Brilliant. Oops. Over to okay. you. Mm. All right, cool guys. So, um, I basically when I was approached to speak at leadership retreat, and I thought about you know what do I have to offer this community. Um, what I thought about was, you know, I think, and I think that Jesse and I are pretty similar in this way. We teach from our mistakes. We both have that in common. Um, and I think it's actually a very powerful way to teach. Um, some people are really beautiful at just beaming the light and, and teaching the way and lighting the path, and that's beautiful. But I think there's a lot of gold when we can really identify our mistakes and our, um, our, our, down, our downfalls that we've had. And I think what's really powerful about that is, and certainly my intention with this presentation was to say, look, here are all the things that I've messed up along the way. And, and here are all the approaches and here, here's all my stinking thinking that has happened in my mind. And when we share that, other people don't feel so alone and they can relate to that and they know that they don't have to get lost in the story of them being a terrible person or them being a terrible leader or them not knowing enough. Um, and also I wanted to make this presentation to kind of get the whole idea of, you know, taking certain ranks off the pedestal because it's not like everything gets better when you hit diamond or blue diamond. Or oh, I so thought it was going to get better and I would like be this amazing person that had it all together and like wouldn't be mental and all that stuff. And I'd feel just as mental and just as messed up and leave my car in this dealership when I've taken it in for a service. So yeah, unfortunately uh, you have money, but all the other stuff that you still have, um, yeah, that comes with you. And it's about continuing to work through and break through that. Yeah, and you know, and about the humility that comes with growth. Like, let's not lie, Jesse, you did so much work to grow into that abundance, and that's why it moves you every time you talk about it. Um, but the humility and the humanness, and just taking away that the ranks or that the people on the stage need to be on a pedestal because we're all the same. And um, when we shine a light on our mistakes and our failures, we can move forward together. So this presentation could have also have been called A Handful of Thoughts on the Ways in Which We Block Our Success. Or you can move to the next one, Jesse. It could have also been called Are uh, You Clogging Up Your Abundance Channels? And so what I'd like to present to you is a bunch of ideas that will block you. And so this is the first one I want to put to you. Are you afraid of out-earning those closest to you? This is really subtle. Uh, this is really, it's a quiet voice. 
it's a quiet voice that says, don't shine too bright and don't be too much of a lighthouse and don't radiate too much because you might make other people around you really uncomfortable. Particularly your peers, like your friendship circle and particularly your parents. This is what's true for me. For you, it might be different. But for me, it's like I have this, I have this really uncomfortable thing. If I think about people that are in my life, my dad is an incredibly hard worker. He's a builder by trade. My husband is a chef and he has his own business and he works his buns off. And these people that I love see the work that I do in doTERRA. And, yes, I work my buns off too, but as Jesse will attest to, like, the residual income is ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous. And I know for me I felt this really strange... Um, Oh, like, am I allowed? Am I allowed when, when so many people that have gone before me really had to grind and really have to work hard? And, you know, the, I, I felt um, awkward. I felt awkward moving into this. And so if you feel the same, you might have, you know, a bestie and she doesn't want to do, you know, you've asked her if she wants to do doTERRA and she's not interested, which is her decision. Um, and you could see that, you know, she's having a little bit of trouble finding her path and here you are and you've found your path and you believe in it. The mind will enter in and it, and it will very quietly, just as I've already said, it will say, just be careful that you don't get too bright. And this is, really to this is a really toxic thought. And all that you need to do when you find yourself wanting to shrink is to take a deep belly breath and to remind yourself that it's safe. It's safe to earn more than the people around you because the earn more, give more. Earn more, give more. It's as simple as that. So if this is you, don't worry about it. Me too. But just because it has been that way doesn't mean it has to be in the future. So you can one breath at a time sort of change your belief patterns around that. Next one, please, Jesse. Oh, this one's really ugly. I'll just let you read it and think about it for a second. <laughs> Ew, no one wants to talk about this bit. <laughs> right? Are you afraid your downline will catch up to you? I have been afraid that my downline, my beautiful team, will catch up to me. I, there have been really, you know, I'm not proud to say that there have been moments in my journey where I've looked at the rock stars in my team, not with pride and joy, but with like, oh, my God, I'm not doing enough. Oh, my God, I need to stay ahead. Oh, my God, I'm inadequate. Um, and so if you felt that way too, that's okay. It's all right. All that matters is that we don't stay there and that we use it as, as data as we take these feelings and these triggers as information. So what's really interesting is you, you catch yourself almost like, it's almost like jealous is the word. It's like... You're triggered by their success, which is really crazy because, um, you know, when I was at leadership, I asked the crowd, how many of you here have a why that is um, centred around in one way or another empowering people to rise? And about three quarters of the room put their hand up. And I'm like, wow, you know, we want the people around us to rise. We're trying to be that beacon. We're trying to teach them. And the second they start rising, we're like, oh, God, they're catching up. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the mind just ridiculous? So, And just to it, add to that, if that's all right, Tara, um, yeah. for me, uh, I'm not afraid my downline will catch up to me um, because, you know, I'm going on presidential. Um, but I have this massive, and I saw in Diamond Club as well, um, a few of the people that are in my team that were in Diamond Club were like, oh, I'm not as amazing as Mish or um, Zane or Tanya Zayeda, and oh, they're so much further ahead of me, and I have this thing, like, if anyone else in Australia beats me to be second presidential, like, I'll totally lose my mind and just not be okay with that. So yeah. just this competition in, in general is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Competition in general is someone you know, breaking your records or matching your speed or blaze, you know, blazing up the charts. So you get these triggers and you feel these emotions as a gateway. 
It's like the universe is just saying, here you go, baby girl. Here's the next little fence that you need to walk through. Here's this next um, emotion or this next situation that you need to look in the eye and ask yourself, you know, do I want to believe that? And do I want to live that as my truth? And, and then you get the choice in all seriousness to decide, well, no, I don't want to believe that. And so repetition is the mother of skill. It takes consciousness. It takes choice in those moments to take that deep breath and go, there is enough for everybody. The more I celebrate that person, the more I celebrate myself. And, you know, what we, what we need to remember is, I don't remember the, the name of the guy. I think someone might have even have mentioned this at leadership, but it's like the guy that first ran the four-minute mile. Mm. And, you know, he was the first guy that did it and then, like, dozens of people did it in the next 12 months. So... Every time you play off myself that I did diamond in 11 months and you did it in 10, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I know, like, babe, you got, you've got the record. Like, I've, I've, slowed, I've slowed down a lot. You got it, girl. You go for it. You get that presidential. But it's sad that that's what it's about for me. Like, I need to deal with my shit. So thank you for bringing it to my attention, Tara. No, that's all right, honey. <laughs> that's what I'm here for yeah um so I think that everyone again it's not something we we want to talk about much that's why I think you're so brave to say that and that's why you know it was brave of me to stand up and say that because people are like oh them too okay so we don't we don't um marinate in it but certainly notice it and if you can notice it you can move through it and it might come up again tomorrow but you move through it tomorrow just take it as it comes next one are you trying to make it the Tara Bliss show or the insert your name here show and look I've got to be honest I have a feeling that not many of you are doing this um, I could be wrong but just to give you a little bit of background from me I, um, I had launched my own business when I was 25 and like Jesse mentioned, I had a past. I, I just had the biggest scanner personality. So I never really stayed in a job for longer than six months because I was became perpetually bored. I wanted to be excited by the work that I did in the world. And so I would do things that were like high adrenaline and high stress and, until I would burn myself out and then, and then get a job. So for me, that was a lot of bartending. I was a hairdresser. I taught. I was a bungee jumping teacher in New Zealand. Um, it was all just like manic um, and then I gradually made my way out of that and I launched my own business when I was 25 um, I was a writer and, and a coach and I developed online programs and basically had conversations like we're having now like what are we afraid of and how do we move through it and so accidentally through all of that I had developed a platform it was never my plan I never was like I want to have a platform I want to have followers it was just very organic and, um, and and taught myself self-taught on how to how to launch an online business and so when doTERRA came along as a bit of an answer to a prayer because I was burning out again as, as is my pattern and my prayer was you know I really need something that has more support and more systems and more structure and more community and then I saw this and I was like wow this is, this is it. This is my way to make a big impact in a way that's going to feel different. And so when I came into doTERRA, I had my online business and as what tends to happen when people have an online business is they shut themselves off from genuine connection. We hide behind Facebook. We hide behind our keyboard. We hide behind our books or our Instagram feeds. And so when I joined doTERRA, I said, there's no way I'm doing classes. There's no way I'm doing the thing that everybody does if they want to be successful. And when I look back, that now, when I look back at that now, I just think it's absolutely hilarious. But there was so much ego. There was so much like, oh, you just wait. I'll show them. I'll do it my way. I don't need to do that network marketing thing. I've got, I've got followers. I've got fans. It was just, it was just horrific. <laughs> and so um, doTERRA has been such a leveler for me 
It has, and we all, we've all got ego, but it spanked me left, right, center, upside down because it showed me that, um, hey, Tara, you have to be the beginner again. Hey, Tara, all those people that have gone before you and they've impacted thousands of people, you have to do what they did. You have to get people in your living room. You have to go into strangers' houses. You have to be rejected. You have to have people say that they're going to come to your class and then not come. You have to go through all the shit that everybody has to go through. What makes you exempt? Oh, I just get so fired up. Um, so it was such a level. Go ahead, Jesse. Sorry, I, I get too excited and want to interject. I'll shut up soon. But I love that people think that people like you and I build our businesses on Facebook. So many people, um, especially in different teams that, that haven't worked with me, think that we just build online. Um, whereas, you know, I did Diamond Club and was doing, you know, 20, 30 events and one-on-ones a month and do classes in my home. I still, I did a class in my home um, two nights ago. So, yeah. yeah, we've all got to get out there and do the groundwork and smash it out. No one's exempt from rejection and from having classes where no one comes or from doing classes for 70 people where no one enrolls or having builders yeah. that say they're going to build and not build and, you know. We're all going to do it. You know, I'll tell you something. When I went down to Melbourne a few weeks ago, oh, I'm hearing a bit my So weird when that happens. Hmm. I think it's better. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I went down and saw Vanessa Jean and her training in Melbourne, and this is the first time I really immersed in her presence, so obviously my mind was blown. Hmm. And... She was telling me the way that her and Paul built their business and, you know, doing like four or five classes a week and getting in people's living rooms from the get-go. And i got to tell you, I sat there and I was so jealous because um, jealous is probably too strong a word, but I was like, that's the way to do the business. Like when I have people with a platform join my team, I am very hesitant because there, is, there can be a sense of entitlement that comes with already having an established platform. And, and I love what Paul says. He's like, I'd rather see someone that's lean and hungry than someone who's got all the followers and, and is too proud to do the work because that was my experience. So um, it, that, this is a fancy way of saying just do what the people before you did. Simple as that <laughs> rather than trying to change it up. Cool, Jesse, next one. Do the classes, keep enrolling. It's that simple. Yeah. Help other oh people do the classes, help other people enroll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We um it's so simple, but our mind complicates it so much. Mm. Focus on solely celebrating your team's results rather than their efforts. This is gonna seem pretty um obvious, you guys, but I have seen the impact that it makes. The, the devastating impact that it makes when all we do is celebrate result, enrolments, rank, when all we do is throw the accolades at the people that have gotten the results. It's very, it can be very painful for other people. Mm. Um, and I, so I have two stories. I have two, we can go off in two directions here. So one is that Something that I, do, that I make sure I do at the end of every month is, you know, when we do our celebrations, and I'm sure, I'm sure most people do this, but I just take a moment and I say, you know, here are our top enrollers, here are our rank advancements. And I would really want to acknowledge everybody that strives for a rank and just missed out in the final moments and, and everybody that, got out of their comfort zone this month and got on the phone for the first time and got rejected for the first time and held your first class. All of you growing, you're all moving forward. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Oh my God. I'm just hearing robot frogs. Just the forty minutes. No, I've I've paid for the thing now, so we're good. Okay. Testing. 
Okay. Yes. Okay, so just just take this on board with your team. Even if you've got a little baby team and you're just and you're just flourishing, it's to really take that moment because I have seen girls come to the end of their month and they're exhausted and they and I and I, they gave it everything. Like if I were them, I would have been like, yeah, there's nothing more I can give. And still, they don't either rank advance or you know hit their targets. And so it's really important that we, you know recognize the effort rather than just the result um, but then on the flip side a story that I told at leadership was there was one time where we jumped on the team call and it was the end of the month and we had a few really significant rank advancements you know like when someone hits premier after doing the business for a year it's like oh my god you made it like this is amazing you've really broken through that threshold <clears throat> And what I did was I jumped on the team call and I could see these beautiful faces that had rank advanced. And then I saw the other faces, which I knew had a bit of a tough month. And in that moment, I shrunk. And for fear of making the other girls feel bad, I, I remember it so clearly, I actually didn't celebrate the girls that did. And I left that call feeling really dirty, like I needed to have a bath. And... And the next week when I jumped on, I'm like, look, guys, I just have to be honest with you. Last week I didn't celebrate for the fear of how it would affect others, but I promise I will never do that again. And can we all hold each other to a high standard and can we all celebrate one another without worrying, you know, if anyone's going to compare. So celebrate the results and celebrate the efforts and just have your eye, have your eye on the effort because so often I think it can go um, unnoticed and that that hurts a lot for people some people need a lot of encouragement and praise I don't I couldn't give a shit mm. I do not need the praise I do not need to cross the stage not interested but some people need it they're, they're hungry for it so something to keep in mind next slide please Dan. Are you fully owning your unique blend of leadership? So I think this is what's actually so powerful about going to leadership is you see all these people cross the stage and it's just mind-blowing, the different energy that everyone brings. And you see the vastness and uh, just the, the sheer difference. Like, you know, Jesse, everybody is so in awe of your honesty. <laughs> they're, they're, in, they're in awe of it like you know you guys all know because she's your leader but when Jessie's in her flow when she's in her zone of genius there's no stopping her because she's speaking from such a place of truth and then you could have Zach up there who spends half his presentation not saying a word just breathing mm. and you're like oh my god oh my god he's like tearing me apart yeah, because it's his presence, you know, and um, and then Leone, who's just so freaking hilarious that she makes people cry because she tears their heart open with her humor and her tenderness. Yeah, so you know, isn't she? She's so special. Oh, you make me want to cry again just thinking about their presentations. It was just so, yeah, amazing. Yeah, guys, you gotta you gotta get there next year. You gotta you gotta commit to moving past Premier and, and just to be a part of something so spectacular and moving. Mm. Um, but so I, I struggled with this because again, because I was making it the Tara Bliss show. Um, Jesse Jesse was the first Australian DoTerra person I tapped into and 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 started forming a friendship with. I came in through Haley Hobson, so all all the training I received, all of the influence was from Hayley. I didn't even know other people were doing doTERRA in Australia. It was just ridiculous. It was so outrageous. Um, so I, I was watching the way that Hayley did her business, very type A, very New York, very go, go, go. And I was just like, oh, there's something not right about this. And I would jump on my team calls and we'd be talking about volume and rank and strategy and I just didn't want to be there like I will be honest in the first few months when my team was building sometimes I would sabotage and figure a way to weasel my way out of leading my team calls 
I had no juice, no juice. I'm like, I have, what, what do I even have to offer? You know, I'm not even enjoying this. What's the deal? And then I had a little bit of an awakening because I got pretty sick earlier in the year and I wasn't able to even communicate with my team for a few months. And by the time I came back, because I'd spent so long away from them and I realised how much they really meant to me, I made myself a promise and I said, Tara, just be you and just give them your gifts and screw everything else. Just give them your energy and serve them how you know that you can. And so we started doing meditations on our team calls. We started um, taking a very different approach where it wasn't about volume and rank. It was about now what support do you need to move through this block? Because when you get rid of that block, you're going to show up and you're going to do the classes and you're going to get the enrollments. So I just played to my strengths. And some of you listening to that will be like, well, I don't know how to do that. It's like, we'll just play to your strengths because some people listen people into their business and some people love them into their business and some people talk their ear off into their business and all of that's perfect. Me, I know my unique signature dance moves as far as a leadership goes. I know what my, what my special dance is and that's I'm really good at communicating. I'm not afraid of conflict resolution and I can iron out kinks when shit's hit the fan. However, don't come to me if you want help organising your business. Don't come to me um, if you want to know a lot about the oils even. I'm not the person for that. There's a person on my team, Beck Carden. She's just this walking, talking encyclopedia. It's like, oh, go see Beck. I don't know. But I'm the girl that they can come to when they're feeling blocked. And I own that. So I hope that lands with you. It's really just about identifying your, your strengths and your, your genius, really. Thanks, Jessie. <clears throat> yeah, same thing. Um, this kind of touches on what I was saying before in that I just owned it and I just stepped into what do I have to offer these people? Oh, I can give them 30-day meditation challenges at the start of the new at the start of a new month so that they're being supported in a way beyond the phone calls and the texts and the emails because I don't know about you guys but I've never been in my inbox and on the phone as much as I have and if you know we're all sensitive souls in this age and it's a lot mm. it's a lot all this wi-fi all this it's a lot and it's very taxing to our nervous system and so I will often put the girls through a 30-day meditation challenge or a journaling challenge or some tapping like, like Jessie does. And it's about how can we support your nervous system and how can we support as well as, you know, obviously using the oils, but how do we give your life some meaning beyond all the doing? And that's something that I know that I can support them with. You, however, might be like, so strategic and so genius at that. And if, and if you are, you need to own it. So again, just all rolling on, I, you know, do you have a spiritual practice? If you don't, now I'm, not, I'm never going to preach and project anything that I think that you should be doing. However, um, as a devout kundalini yogi, um, there's, something, there's something that happens in our lives when we have the diligence and the devotion to show up for nobody but ourselves. So when you sit for meditation, Nobody congratulates you. you. You don't rank advance. Um, you know, you don't get a bigger check at the end of the month. You don't have a Facebook announcement that says, good job, you sat for 10 minutes today. You know, it's, um, it's really, gosh, it's so humbling in that way. But this is, this is the way that I explain meditation to people. Now, I don't care if you do guided or if you just watch your breath or if you do a little mantra like Sat Nam. Sat on the inhale, nam on the exhale. It just means truth is my identity, not my ego, not my fears, not my story, not my past, but truth. Um, the thing about it is if you can sit with yourself and close your eyes and watch your breath for 10 minutes, and let's just say it's very uncomfortable for you, 
and your and your voice becomes very you know the voice up here becomes self attacking and it tells you that there's too many things to do and I feel uncomfortable and I don't want to do this and I can't meditate and all this chaos comes in and you and still you sit and you wait and you watch and you observe and you allow the very practice of enduring your own mind just for 10 minutes means that essentially what you've done is you've just rehearsed for life because you'll go out and then someone will cut you off in traffic or your team member will trigger you into um, frustration or rage or whatever um, or something will happen in your day and but you are already prepared because you can sit with the one person that causes the most stress in your life and that's yourself. We do it. Our minds do it. Now on the flip side, if you can sit in stillness and get a glimpse of the bliss or the grace or that sweet nothing sensation and you can accept that and you can allow that and you can smile at that, then it also means that when you get out into the real world, you can also accept the love and you can accept the compliments and you can accept the grace and the money and the team and the enrolments because you've already rehearsed for it. Does that make sense? If you think of meditation as a metaphor for life and if you think of meditation as the best way that you can show up to yourself because, again, there is... I say that there is no reward, but actually the, re the reward is the best thing ever and that's that you change your perspective, you carry a new vibration into the rest of your day and that does affect your paycheck actually when it all comes down to work. Cool. <clears throat> mm, this is a bit of a weird one. I don't even know if I can explain this properly. Are you bridging the gap between enabling and empowering? We hear this a lot, don't we? Um, we don't enable people, we empower them. And so I truly believe, uh, and I'm sure you've had Jesse treat, treat you this because I, I believe in, in, in your way of placements, Jesse, how we place deep so we don't enable people. I think that's the best way to go rather than power of three. I've been burnt by power of three. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <clears throat> and so when I'm talking about the difference between enabling and empowering I feel like sometimes I have seen people give up on someone's spirit a bit too early so I don't think that we should be building anyone's businesses for them because yes that would be enabling but I think um, we can make maybe be a little bit more patient with people who are struggling what we need to remember is I think you know I watched something with Seth Risen May recently and he said with doTERRA you know you've either grown before you get in or during. And so like with me, I'd been doing personal growth for years before I came in, but there are people coming into my business that have never meditated, that have, that have never picked up a self-help book, that, um, that watch the six o'clock news every night and that are in a constant state of perpetual fear. And that requires a lot of, they require a lot of attention and a lot of patience and a lot of um, guidance. And so this is just an invitation to know it's really beautiful when someone comes on your team and, and I've, had, I've had this happen a couple of times and it's just like they're so independent and self-motivated that it's literally like, okay, babe, I'm here when you need me, but you got this. Like it's rare, but it's beautiful when it happens. Most of the time people need more than that. You know, they need, they, need, they, they need you to guide them and they need you to show them. So don't leave, don't leave them behind too early. It'll make a better leader out of you if you, if you be, be more patient. Everybody has an ego. You cannot get rid of your ego. It will never go away. If you try and get rid of your ego, you will be in a constant state of pain because the mission will be futile. So what's really important to remember is that the ego, you know, if you are a whole being, then we are the darkness and we are the light. And if we are a whole being, then we are the soul and we are the ego. So the ego is just simply contrast to our, our higher soul self. And the ego keeps things really human and really 
um, awkward and, and really bracing. You know, our soul wants to expand and we always hear all this stuff about the higher self and love and acceptance and grace and that, that's, a, that's beautiful. But the ego, you know, is the jealousy, is the comparison, is the judgment, is the self-criticism. And the thing about all that stuff is it's actually really important because without it, there is no growth. There's no growth. If you're just operating from a space of soul the whole time, I mean, uh, I kind of get a little bit bored thinking about that. The ego keeps things interesting because it shows you where you need to grow. But the mistake that many of us make is that when we hear that voice that says that we're not pretty enough or worthy enough, that we're no good, that's never going to happen, that we're comparing ourselves to another leader, we believe that we are that voice rather than it's just a voice that we have. Everybody thinks the same thoughts. Some people think that their ego is especially evil and especially awful because, oh, my God, you should hear what my mind says about me. It's like, come on, mate. I say the exact same thing. Like my ego, we all say the same thing. It's just I think what sets people apart, for lack of a better term, is one person in that moment is going, my ego is totally out of control right now. Whoa. And they look at it. And the other person is going, what is wrong with me? And they're identifying. See the, see the difference? They're identifying with the ego. They think that it's who they are rather than looking at it like it's a crazy thing. Mm-hmm. Just because it speaks loudly doesn't mean it speaks truthfully. It, it's actually a gateway to your most beautiful experiences in life because, like I said, without the ego, there is no courage. There is no compassion. It's our ego that unifies us, our flaws and our imperfections. And uh, when we understand that we are not it, but we can move alongside it, um, that's a really powerful realisation to have. Okay, just a few things to finish up with here. Remember, you've been given the team that you need for your ultimate growth. So often in doTERRA we hear, um, you know, that everyone needs to bloom where they're I, can, I never get it right is it bloom where you're planted yeah something like that yeah mm-hmm. um so often you know if someone comes to your team and they're like hey i want to join your team because i don't get any support over here and we say no no you know it's up to you you're responsible to bloom where you're planted what i try and remind my leaders is that that's true for those people but it's also true for us in that we have been given the team we need for our ultimate growth so your, your downline, your crossline, whatever, will test your patience, trigger your childhood wounds, make you feel like a victim. They will do all these things at one time. And again, they have to because without that, you will not grow. Um, doTERRA has made me so much more of a better human because I have been in situations with someone where in the past I might have been like, who do you think you are? Or don't talk to me like that. And instead I have taken a breath and gone, there's a solution to this. Let's find it. You know, let's find the solution. So next time you're triggered by your team in any way, whoop, there we go. There's the growth edge. This is what's imperative for the next iteration of your journey. If you want to be an impeccable leader first, lead yourself you need to coach yourself through your journey you need to coach yourself through your relationships your life and this last little point here be the usher of possibilities for your team i shared a little visualization um, at leadership where in the moments where i remember that i am not my ego that i have one but that i am not it and it's almost like i could be having a crazy thought and then I remember and I catch myself. And I, what I imagine is that I'm looking at my ego and I've just caught it in the act. Like I've just caught it trying to hypnotise me into thinking that, you know, it's, it speaks the truth when in fact it doesn't. And the look that my ego has on its face is this really guilty look. It's this really cute, guilty look like it's just been caught. And I imagine that what it does is it kind of looks at me sheepish, sheepishly and it stands to the side and it says, Sorry, Tara, you caught me as you were. 
keep going as you were. And so imagine if you were that usher of possibilities for your team, when you can see their limitations and you can see, um, you can see that their fears and their blocks, but instead you go, hey, there's the path as you were and you can help be that usher of possibilities, be their guide. Um, and this is just a little montage of the things that are important to me. Um, play, it's so important to do the things that we love. It opens up our uh, abundance channels to receive more of everything. And the more, that we, the more that we have, the more that we give, it recycles. It's really important that you circulate the energy. And um, particularly as women, we can't get too lost in the doing, 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 because that's when our soul starts to feel starving. And that's when we start lashing out at our partners. And that's when we get burnt out and we feel like we can't get out of bed for days. So really making the time in your life for the things that you love. It's not profound, but it's the first thing that we forget. That's it, guys. That's it for me. That was my little, that was my little something, something. Ooh, kicked me in the face tonight, Tara, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. Brutal. Uh, mm. It's funny because just before I got on this webinar, I was having a meltdown because I hadn't done my makeup and I haven't done my hair and I'm wearing this feral shirt and I have sweat down to my underwear and Tara is too pretty and I'm going to look ugly and wear my So just more comparing. I think Tara was like, uh, for those of you who haven't heard me talk about Tara before, literally when Tara started doing the business, I rang Shannon and I said, right, time to quit. Tara Bliss has started. She's taking over the wellness industry. She's a blogger. Everyone likes her more than me. Oh, yes. Jessie, Jess. So, you know, true. we all compare mm. ourselves to others and we've got to cut the shit because we all have so much to give and so much to offer and people just want to be heard by you. They don't give a shit about me or Tara Bliss. They want you to sit in front of them and hear their stories and serve them with what they need and where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you're the only one that has the voice for your tribe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you're amazing. Fucking hell. Oh, it's so, uh, but that's the leadership, babes. That's, you know, you're just showing your emotion and, you know, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. It's amazing so amazing can everyone i can't see anyone's faces um but can anyone see can everyone see the um the value in revealing your flaws and revealing your insecurities maybe yeah you're so beautiful jesse isn't that cute <laughs> <laughs> especially as women it's like just show us who you are because we have such a bullshit meter yeah like we don't want to see the rah-rah. We want to see that. Nothing but that. Love having you as my leader, Jessie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you, yeah, you, you bet. I was going to say, I hope you're recording this part. You better not edit it out so the rest of your team can see it. Yeah, it's recording. Great. Can't wait to put it up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go on YouTube as well so you can share it with your team, Tara. Thanks, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much for sharing what you shared with us in our leadership retreat. It's really, yeah, helpful to hear different perspectives. And one thing that resonated with me was um, congratulating people on their effort as well, which is something that I try to do and, you know, tell everyone it's as long as you're moving forward, keep going and do it at your own pace and stuff. But I remember what it was like to, you know, go for Diamond and not get there and go for Diamond again and not get there. And, you know, you've just got to keep going because you will get there eventually. you just got to keep sharing the oils, keep sharing from your heart, keep listening and helping people and helping them move through their blocks as you move through your own and just keep doing the same thing while you, while you grow and do the personal development and stillness practice. Like I didn't even pick up my car today because I was so mental and just doing 8,000 things and trying to get ready to fly tomorrow and, I looked for a passport for two hours that I'd already packed two weeks ago. Like, what is that? So, yeah, yeah. it's really important that we come back to stillness and yeah, awesome. seeing ourselves and sharing our gifts instead of comparing ourselves to people like Tara. <laughs>
I'm just a human. I'm just a human. Stop being so attractive. Um, Jesse, when are you? When are you? <laughs> no, you're beautiful, Tara. Exactly. When are you? Um, thank you, sweetheart. I just wanted to ask you: When are you hoping to hit presidential? Just so I can hold hold, hold you in my heart for it. <laughs> this year, within the next. Or you, year. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I've got two six platinums now, so I've got four golds, two platinums. Oh wow! Amazing. Yeah. How's that? Oh, so good. That's amazing, honey. It's gonna happen. Yeah. How are you going for blue? Yes. Yeah, so I've got four golds and one premier. Who will probably hit silver this month? Brilliant. So not far. Not far. Very exciting. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to go sleep and probably cry some more because um, I've got to fly tomorrow. So I'll be applying copious amounts of essential oils to cope with that. Awesome. Pamela said, Jesse, never compare yourself to others. You are giving away your power by joining. A beautiful trip. If you're not yourself, who else? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And thank you for your time and energy. Jesse, love your rawness, helps me get in contact with my own. Alison says, thank you both so much. Ali, and thank you, Tara, for this wonderful webinar power. I'm glad I'm not the only blubber. Go, Jesse, you're amazing. Um, yeah, I try love you, babe. I love you. You're the perfect leader for them. <laughs> Thanks for being so honest and raw as always, Jesse. Oh, you guys. Raw, honest and real, Jody. All right, well... I love you all. My team are absolutely amazing and I love you, Tara. Thank you so much. I love you too. I'll flick you the YouTube link so we can share okay. the world because it was pretty powerful stuff. So gratitude. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah.